So today I wanted to talk a little bit more about Battlefield 2042 because we actually got another decent update the other day about what's happening with this game moving forwards. And uh, if you're a fan of Battlefield 2042, as I think most of us really want to be, then it's actually pretty good reading. It's just unfortunately the time frame for what's going to happen is still something that bothers me. But if you did miss the blog post, basically the blog post goes into detail about a bunch of changes that are going to be coming to the Kaleidoscope map and also the renewal map as well and this comes after dice reached out to the community and said look hey we want to get your feedback on these maps we know that you're not 100 percent happy with them so how would you like to change them uh, and they put up some ideas initially about a month ago let me just kill that guy lovely um, and those ideas have now sort of been sort of rolled into a new blog post but just before we continue, a word from Alienware, our sponsor today, and their M15 R6 gaming laptop. This thing is the perfect portable gaming companion. It features Intel Core i7 processors and Nvidia GeForce RTX laptop graphics, giving you high frame rates and top tier performance in a compact package. The 1440p high refresh rate display gives you fluid gameplay no matter what title you're playing, and it supports G-Sync technology as well from Nvidia helping to smooth out demanding moments and keep gameplay nice and solid. The sturdy build quality gives you confidence that this thing will survive well into the future and it's a really smart design as well. For all the details and to support the channel, click the link at the top of the description now and head over to the product pages. I'll put some images up on the screen because some of the changes are actually really good. Like they've updated a couple of the objectives on Kaleidoscope to give it a little bit more of like a sort of a, like a military encampment feeling. So it's not so, such a pristine environment anymore, which I'm actually really a fan of. And I think Battlefield 2042 needs that across almost the entire game, really. Uh, so the fact that they're making some of those changes to Kaleidoscope is fantastic, because I do think Kaleidoscope is actually one of the worst maps in the game. But the time scale for these, these changes, and they are good changes, I'm, I'm going to say that, they are the changes that I think we all wanted to see. It's just that those time changes, those time frames are still pretty long. Like, we're going to have to wait until, I think it says Season 1, midway through Season 1, for the updates to Kaleidoscope and Renewal. Uh, so just two of the seven base game maps being updated. And then more of the updates will come as part of Season 2 for the other base game maps. But it doesn't specify which of those base game maps they're talking about. Oh, I tried to hit that and it didn't work. God damn it. And, and for me, it, it simply is the time scale. Unfortunately, the way Battlefield 2042 is playing out, it's just taking too long. Oh yeah, I couldn't hit that guy. <laughs> I just could not hit him. Now, I don't know much about game development specifically. Like, I, I've been to the DICE studios and I've spoken to developers and I'd love to say that that gives me a rich knowledge and understanding <laughs> of, uh, of game development, but unfortunately it doesn't. Um, so I don't really, I'm not qualified to, to say whether this is, you know, a good or a bad sort of time scale for getting stuff done. We know that season one is arriving in early summer uh, and season two will then likely follow summer. So probably like, I don't know, September, something like that. So you're looking at early summer. So June from April, May and June. So it's going to take two months for them to implement these changes to Kaleidoscope and, and Renewal. And then the other maps, the other work that needs to be done on those maps is going to take several more months on top of that. So you're looking at maybe five or six months from the point which they start actually implementing these things. Now, like I say, I'm not a game developer, so I don't know whether that's like a, a good time scale, whether that's quick, whether that's slow. But as a player, as a player of Battlefield and somebody who, you know, is following this game, not playing it as much as I would want to, but can't hit this guy. <laughs> not playing it as much as I want to. But I'm still following this game. I mean, these maps are already made. So they're already there, right? And the assets that are being put in place seem to be mimicking assets that are already available in the game. So for me, as a player, I look at that and go, why is it taking nearly six months to update some maps with this game and that when they've already been created? I can understand if they were brand new maps. Obviously, I know maps that are brand new take time. That's, that, was a, that was a better kill at range there. I'm not using the gun that I should be using at range, at least, anyway. I mean, I should probably use the, the, heavy, the, uh, the heavy ammo as well. Is this the heavy ammo? The high power ammo. There we go. I'll switch over to that. Um, so, yeah, that, what I'm saying is, is, like, from a game development perspective, it may well be a normal time scale that they're working to. And, and that's, that's fine. But as a player... I just look at that and I think that's taking way too long to get things done that admittedly have been very obvious to most players 
since the game launched. I think, you know, the, the critical feedback of maps since Battlefield 2042 launched has been ever present. Like, I, I, I would argue that actually Battlefield 2042's launch maps the, as a group are some of the worst that we've ever had for a Battlefield game launch. And we I like BF3, for example, is probably the gold standard with Operation Metro, Sen Crossing, uh, Grand Bazaar, Caspian Border, Karg Island, and Operation Firestorm. These are some absolutely classic maps that flow really well for a Battlefield game. And they were the launch maps. The launch maps for 2042 are very, very forgettable. And I, I'm not a huge fan of them, if I'm honest. And so, like, the fact that it's taking that much longer to fix them doesn't give me a great feeling. And because I'm just a player of this game, when I see that, you know, I thought coming out of the launch of Battlefield 2042, we were going to be coming on to Season 1 almost instantly. Just a few weeks after launch, I thought we'd see the launch of Season 1. As it transpires... What is it yet to me? Where did it come from? <laughs> oh, Battlefield still gives some of those moments. But yeah, I thought we were coming into Season 1 almost instantly. But as it's transpired, Season 1 is not happening now or even for the next few months it's not happening until the early summer which is you know that's nearly a year after launch and that's not a time scale i think anyone really expected so then to have to wait even longer for content that launched with the game to be quote unquote fixed that's not a great feeling as a player of the game anyway well there's so many people on this corner here i reckon i could help can i help yes i can help with that smart grenade Yes. There we go. More kills. Oh, look at this. This is this is chaos. This is absolute chaos here. We are playing 128 players, by the way. Where's that heli? Yes! Take down. I also want to keep an open mind because I'm not a game developer, and therefore I don't know if this is a normal time scale for things to take this long. And I'm being a little bit unreasonable in assuming that these these situations should should transpire a bit quicker. I look at other games and I see how quickly changes can be made. And admittedly, those changes come through a lot quicker than they do in Battlefield games. So the standard that's being set in the industry with other games on the market is much quicker than what DICE seems to be able to do with Battlefield 2042. And that's why I don't think this is taking... this. Is, I think this is taking too long to get things sorted. But there is, there is some good news, and this is what I keep thinking to myself. Battlefield 2042's older maps... There we go, just hit that. The older maps are being remade at the same time that hopefully we're going to be seeing new maps coming into the game. Season 1 is going to introduce a new map. We are going to get new weapons for the game as well. I'm sort of trying to keep that in my head and keep as optimistic as I possibly can that uh, Battlefield 2042 may have some sort of prosperous future. I think that the game has dipped so low that I don't think the, chan that, that the chances of this game making the comeback like Battlefield 4 did, for example, which admittedly also had a very poor launch. I just don't think the chances are very high. 2042, unfortunately, there are so many inherent problems with this game in the way that it was designed and the choices that were made during development that I just don't think they're in a good enough position to be able to, to make changes and, and bring this game back to the masses. I think a lot of people have already chalked this one up as a game that they will probably no longer play. And something else that I do want to touch on because I think it's important and I think it's good to question these things, which is why I've made this video today, because I want, I'd want i like to know the answer to the question, why is it taking as long as it is to get things sorted for this game? Um, I'd like to know why some of these things weren't picked up during the development of Battlefield 2042. There must have been multiple opportunities for developers to speak up or managers to pick things out and say hey are we definitely going down the right route here like there must have been ample opportunity for developers to look at previous battlefield games and say hey is is this map as good and as awesome as as the previous games that we've had does it compare on a level to some of our most popular maps in previous games yes no and I look at then the performance of the game, for example. The performance is very poor. Like, I'm playing this game right now, and I can't tell you what the FPS is, but I can tell you through my mouse moving it around that this is not high FPS. It's probably running around 60. But as a PC player for Battlefield games, I've come to expect higher. So was the question not asked during development, hey, are we going down the right direction here when it comes to performance? Is there something we can do to try and mitigate that problem? And as we all know, I think 128 players is the problem. It's causing so much effort on the servers 
and so much there's so much power going through that I'm not sure that maybe 128 players was the right way to go. I just wonder if at any point during development of this game were these important questions asked? Perhaps they just sort of went, yeah, we know this is a problem, but we've got a deadline and we've got to get this game done by that deadline. Because you've got to remember, 2042 was was already delayed by a year. It was due to actually launch in, in late 2020. Um, but EA and DICE delayed it. They gave the development team an extra year, or EA delayed it and gave DICE an extra year in order to try and get to try and get the game ready. Um, and so, like, they were already had an extra year. But it just makes me wonder whether more time was needed. Like, we don't know what the state of the project was really in when the game was first delayed. We did get that extra month's delay, but that was that ever really going to make that much of a difference? Hindsight's 2020. Keep saying that about 2042. But there were just so many questions that I'd love to know the answer to. Did, were these problems seriously considered as actual problems during development? Or was it just simply pushed past in order to try and get this game out of the door? I don't know if we'll ever really know the answer to that. Because part of me feels like EA doesn't want to give us the answer to that question. Because it just continues to... I think it just continues to perpetuate the narrative that this game was rushed out of the door. And decisions weren't really taken with, with much caution, unfortunately. But yeah, I, I just wanted to sort of highlight that they're, they are working on stuff for this game. And, and things will will come to fruition. I'm just, I, I just wish it wouldn't take so damn long to get to that point. It's frustrating to see that we're, they're having to make changes to, to base game maps in order to bring them up to a, an acceptable level. And, <laughs> and we still don't have a launch date for the first season or indeed the second season. But they're supposedly going to be making even more changes. It, it, again, it, it's frustrating as a Battlefield fan to sit here and look at this situation. And I will continue to hold out a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of hope that they might be able to salvage this game. Like, but like I say, I'm not convinced that they will be able to do it. But anyway, that, that's enough of me rambling. I hope you have a one uh, a one tastic. I hope you have a fantastic, wonderful Sunday. And, and if you enjoy Battlefield 2042, then that's fantastic. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, but I'm going to have to wait and see what they do uh, to these maps to see whether it's worth me investing my time in it again. Nice take down there. <laughs> but yeah, thank you very much for watching, and uh, I'll catch you all very soon.